Well, here's a last look at this beautiful D41 Martin in all her sparkling glory. The removed and re-glued bridge. Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here one more time for String Tech. We've got a few things on the go today, but I wanted to talk about these feeler gauges. I picked these up at the surplus store for two, three bucks, right? Usually pick up a few at a time. Now, I like the ones that you can actually disassemble, and I'll explain that in a second. I just want this 7 thou feeler gauge. Let me explain. Well, I snipped that to size with my 10 snips, and taped it into place with this very thin scotch tape. So this, I'm making this undercut that I make. Ooh, that 7 thou might be a little thick. We'll have to go thinner than that. Let's see how this works. Ah, much better. Okay. Slip that in a little further. Finish up the last little bit. I'm staying away from that outside edge and you can see I'm angling the saw so that we get the inside. And the whole idea of course is to as I keep saying, cover our tracks. So that's a two thou feeler gauge that uh, I've got taped on there now. And this is going to give us that little tiny bit of flex that we need after we reset the neck. And that's going to do it. I got a couple of maneuvers I want to show you guys, especially you, you know, the latest uh, GPS tech deck guys. So we're going to go over to the tech deck for a second.
This gives you yet another perspective on how I set up to do the neck reset. Gryffindor. I know it looks like the sorting hat from Harry Potter, but this is what we've got. So it's filled with lead buckshot. So I just use that funnel and fill this up to the optimum level so that when I put it on the Tech Dex body platform, it's not too high, but it's just high enough to support the underside of the acoustic guitar back across the head block. This is the ledge that that buckshot bag sits on. This pencil line represents the ledge that you want left over after we finish finessing this to get this to fit properly. I got a beautiful dry press fit on that dovetail. This, this is the bean bag filled with buckshot. By supporting the guitar at the head block, that keeps the dovetail in place as I'm doing that last bit of leveling. So this is how I set up for driving those frets and the fingerboard extension. I've got my bench dog hockey puck there holding that down tight to the maple block and that maple block is supported by that chunk of steel which bridges across the two rails of the body platform. So here's a close-up of that bridge re-glue on the back side here. And this is the front side. Now in this case, after the neck reset, this saddle is cantilevered back slightly towards the pin. The other option was to fill in the slot and re-slot, but I thought I'd get away with uh, this bone saddle cantilevering back ever so slightly. It's really only for the low E and the A string. The other four strings fall within the confines of that slot. And there's the compensated nut for 12 to 53 at concert pitch. A lot of that dishing in of the top between the bridge and the edge of the sound hole has been corrected by two things. I had humidified this guitar for a good two weeks before I started working on it. And the other thing that's kind of interesting is the 24 foot spherical radius of the bridge when the bridge was glued on it actually corrected that imploding top even more by lifting it up a little bit straighter.
got a good healthy string height off the soundboard here, enough to drive that soundboard, but not too much tension that would cause damage. Lots of real estate now in that saddle now that that neck has been reset. And although this guitar is a bunch of little nicks and bashes and war wounds, I guess, from over the years, it is in remarkably good shape. No braces have let go, no cracks that had to be dealt with, top and back are pretty clean. Let's go have a listen. 